Hey, thank you again for joining me in this message. Weekly I have a message and I hope it's helping you. And I know it's helping me as I study God's Word. But I was reading through the book of Hosea. And Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. And if you've been following us, I've been in Mark chapter 4 and in Romans chapter 8. Mark chapter 4, talking about the sower and the seed, and Mark chapter 8, uh, convincing us of God's love for us as a solid foundation. And so, uh, when I was looking at this, and listening to this, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Of all the statements that God makes in the Bible, I think this one reveals the core of the rebellion or disobedience and struggles that many of God's people are going through. It's easy uh, to say, oh, let's just get knowledge and we won't be destroyed. Is it? Is it that easy? I think it, it takes more than that. And so in this message, we're going to explore what God's Word says. The passage starts off with my people. You know, um, here... God is revealing his feeling for feelings for those who he calls his people. And according to 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with us or with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. You know, his feelings are for everyone on the planet. And you may say, well, not all people are my people. Well, that's okay if you, if you think like that. But God sees all people the same. You know, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world. That means everyone. And so, just uh, as God has chosen, He has chosen to love people, then we too need to choose to love people also. And so, as we have um, chosen to follow Jesus, and because of the price he paid for us, and uh, we look at the benefits of that, it shouldn't be just for us. It should be for us and others. Because somebody was praying for us. Somebody cared about us enough to tell us about Jesus. And so... Um, we are the ones who've already made a choice, and yet there's other people out there who've yet to make that decision to follow Jesus. But we need to give them a way, right? Like Jesus said in John chapter 4 and verse uh, 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So what would happen if we just focused on our people? You know, whatever ethnicity you are or wherever you live, whatever country you live in. You know what would happen? Within a matter of days, the world would hear the gospel and find out how God loves them and wants the best for them. You know, I believe that people in our lives are our people. You know, and you just go, well, I just drive by these people. One day I was uh, stuck on the side of the road with my truck. If you know my truck, it's an older truck. So it was having some problems. And um, and while I was sitting there, I was kind of frustrated. And God said, what are you doing? And I said, well, you know, this truck doesn't want to start. <laughs> and so uh, God said, yeah, but look at all these hundreds of people passing you by. You could be praying for them. So I said, oh, okay. So I spent about half an hour sitting there praying for them. And then I, I just some, this thought came to my mind. Check on YouTube, you know why? And it was it was so dumb. It was so dumb because this guy said, you know, yeah, if you're stuck and all this stuff, all you gotta do is take a wrench. And like, here we go. Take a wrench and open your hood and go to your ECU, your engine com engine control unit, and you just bang it a few times, and uh, with your key on, then you're going to hear ding in your dash, you know, in the in your truck. And, and it's going to start after that. And I just thought, that is so dumb. 
<laughs> so what I did was, I did it anyway. I said, it's so dumb, it, it should work. So I went out there, I banged it. Guess what happened? Yep, you know, the thing started up. But I thought, I looked at, you know, the. I didn't have a perspective that all the people driving by in traffic were people that were valuable to God, and he wanted me to pray for them. So I didn't have that half an hour of prayer, you know, planned for them, but God did. And so the people in our lives, they're our people, okay? And, it, and the Bible goes, or this verse goes on to say, are destroyed, you know. He said, my people are destroyed. Well, can you see how the majority of crimes are not in wars or not uh, people against people, you know, one people country against another, but the majority of crimes happen between one another, people in the same community. So crimes are not committed against those who are far away, but those close enough um, to us to hurt, abuse, or even kill. Just think about that. You know, our society has left the home of helping one another and created a worldly, material-dependent giant or monster even, which makes each group of people our adversaries instead of our brothers and sisters. Before welfare started, their people used to help each other. And now then the government stepped in and everybody said, well, uh, I don't need help you. Just go help. Go ask the government. They'll help you. Wrong attitude. That's not God's attitude. God's attitude is, you know, love him and then love your neighbor. Hey, you guys smart. Neighbor as what? Yourself. Do you take care of yourself? I hope you do. And if you're do, taking care of yourself, whatever minimal stuff, you should be able to do the same for your neighbor. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life, and life more abundantly. Or one translation says, to the full. And so, God's people are destroyed. Why? For lack of knowledge. God is not talking about worldly knowledge, but His knowledge, which we get from His Word, the Bible. That's right. It's God's Word. The world tells us that in order for us to get up the corporate ladder, we need to pull down the guys above us and step on the ones we're going up to get up. When God says to encourage one another, you want, you want to go up? Push the person up above you and help the person behind you up also. <laughs> Encourage one another in everything. Just as we would do it unto the Lord, we would do it unto them. Okay? The world says, take, and God says, give. The world says, hide, hide your sin. And God says, no, confess your sin so I can forgive you. The world says, you deserve the best, even at the expense of others. When God says, do not hold back from those in need, when it is in your power to help them. Wow. Yeah. Maybe not every single time, because, you know, I know I was pulled up to a traffic light, and there was a guy with a sign, and the light changed, and there was, it was during traffic, and I just thought, okay. But there's time, many times, where I've stopped and I check my my ashtray because in my car, and I put my change in there. Hey, I pull out some money, give them to them. Yeah, when you are able to help, help. The world says, Dad, forget them guys. No, but the Bible says that when we give to the poor, we are lending to the Lord. Can you see how? We're destroyed because our society has said, no, don't do that. Don't do that and all that. And God is saying, I want you to do that. Right? The world says to find your life, put yourself first. When God says to find your life, you must lose it. The world says to be great, have others serve you. When God says in order to be great, you must 
serve others. Wow, a lot to think about, right? The world says, go for the best so others will notice you and give you praise. Wow, that's a nice car you got, bro. Wow, that's a nice clothes you got. Wow, that's a nice house. Yeah, take care of all of that stuff. But why are you doing? What's the motive behind what you're doing? When God says, be satisfied with what you have, for he knows your needs. Jesus said, the world, they worry about what they're going to eat or what they're going to drink or what they're going to wear, where they're going to live and all that. And God said, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added as well. <laughs> God is so awesome. The world says, sin is not sin. In fact, there is no sin. When God is actually grieved, the Bible says, we can grieve God when we turn away from Him and we don't do what He says. Wow. The world says there is no God when they cannot explain intelligent design or how a bumblebee with big fat body and small little wings can fly. When physically it's, it seems impossible <laughs> and then there how it was life created they don't know how life is created I, I was just talking to someone the other day and there's people trying to patent human genes no you only can patent what you what you have created they didn't create us god did okay the world guesses and god knows the world finds out when God knew all of the time, right? The world doesn't care about you. When God so loved you, he stepped up and paid the debt that you owed. And the wages, the Bible says, of sin is death. That's why Jesus came and Jesus died for you and for me. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, that he would lay down his life for his friends. Wow, that is love. So who is feeding you? The world or God's word? As believers and followers of Jesus, we have no excuse and every reason to avoid being destroyed by allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us his ways, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. Let me say that again, okay. We need to avoid being destroyed by allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us His ways, His understanding, His wisdom, and His knowledge. Proverbs starts off many, you know, wisdom cries out, you know, come simple people or people without knowledge, and I want to give you knowledge. Man, it's, that's God right there. Freedom is not doing what you want. Freedom is doing what you should, right? Because anybody can do what they want, right? Too many are trying to convince others that their way is the best, and that all the other ways are wrong. Their motive is, if you don't believe like I believe, or do what I do. You are wrong. In other words, it's my way or the highway. Am I trying to say that? No. God says it in his word that his way is narrow. But the world's way is broad. Everybody can go, is going down the broad way. But we need to find that narrow way because God cares about us. Hosea goes on to say, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they, or he says, You have rejected knowledge. I also reject you. Wow. Wow. Imagine what would happen if we, God's people, would accept God's word, which is good for teaching and tr or teaching the truth, Rebuking error, correcting faults, and giving instruction for right living. You know what would happen? Then the people who serve God 
would be the ones that God would use to not be destroyed, but the opposite of destroyed is to flourish. He would help us to flourish so that we can help others experience new life in Jesus. Then the person who serves God will be fairly, it goes on in 2 Timothy 3, 16, verse 17, it says, the person who serves God will be fully qualified and equipped to do every kind of good deeds. Don't you want to be that kind of person? If you are being convicted of sin in your life, don't run from it. Don't blame others. You know, do not just live with it. Do not make excuses for it. Do not ignore it. Because it's like anything else. You know, like you ignore your yard, especially here in Hawaii. Man, that thing will take over here, take over your house and your car and everything. You know, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, admit our faults, confess it to God, and He will not only forgive us, but continue to help clean up our lives of all the sin that's in our lives, the thing that's holding us back. Wow. So let's be God's people who have knowledge, have His knowledge, and are not destroyed, but flourishing and being built up. Let's continue in His Word. Jesus says this in John chapter 8, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you, that's right, free. God's truth is there to make us free. So let's live free so that we can help others be free also. Let's pray. Lord, help us. Man, sometimes i got to admit, when I first started reading the Bible, and even now, sometimes I read it, man, it's I. what are you trying to say, God? That's why I read different versions of the Bible, trying to help me to understand. But thank you for Holy Spirit being right here, helping me. And you said, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. So bless each one that's listening Lord, bless your people so that they will not be destroyed. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hi, Mom and Brother Keone. Hey, mahalo for watching. Aloha.